time now for Morning Rounds with CBS News Chief Medical Correspondent Dr. John LaPook and CBS News contributor Dr. Holly Phillips. This morning we open the floor to you. We're answering some questions posted on our CBS This Morning Facebook and Twitter accounts. Lois S. starts us off with the question, what are the side effects and alternatives for statins? John, we talk about statins all the time here, but before we get to Lois's questions, let's talk about what exactly they are right. and who should be taking them. Well, they're very powerful drugs. Before there were statins, it was really tough to get the LDL, that bad cholesterol, down in a significant way. They work by affecting the way the liver metabolizes cholesterol. And LDL, the bad cholesterol, is made in the liver mm -hmm. uh, and it interferes with the way it's made and so it lowers it dramatically. Now in terms of who should be taking them, what a raging debate. Here's what there's no debate about. Yeah. If you've had a heart attack or a stroke, you have known heart disease, you should be taking a statin almost in all cases, unless there's a reason not to. In everybody else, in terms of preventing uh, that's, that's the secondary prevention. You already had a problem. Now, mm -hmm. to have the primary prevention, you're preventing it from happening in the first place, heart attack, stroke. Right. Um, there's a lot of debate about it. Bottom line is that it's a personalized uh, decision. The yeah. lot goes into it. You try to do risk, uh, lifestyle modification, lose weight, see what it happens with that. And then if you need to, you go to the statin explaining the risks and benefits of it all. Well, let's get to Lois's question then. Are there side effects that are clearly known? Yeah, there, there, there are. Now, the vast majority of people who take statins have no side effects at all and really no complications. Mm -hmm. But there are people who do experience them. Uh, by far, the, the biggest complaint is muscle soreness, muscle weakness, uh, a sense of achiness in the muscles. And sometimes there can be more severe side effects in the muscles, something called rhabdomyolysis, which is true muscle damage. Uh, there can be liver complications. And there also have been some links uh, with memory memory problems and possibly a link with a uh, higher blood sugar mm -hmm. that leads to diabetes. Uh, the people who are most likely to have side effects are women over the age of 65, people who are on multiple medications for cholesterol, and also people who drink alcohol. So more than one drink a day for women, more than two drinks a day for men. The reason is, is because statins are metabolized through the liver as is alcohol, and in tandem, the liver may not do so well trying to do both. In terms of the memory problems, you know, there have been reports, and so they, re they say there have mm -hmm. been reports of these. But when people have done big studies to look at it, it really hasn't looked like, at least from a conversation I had this morning with an expert on this, said it hasn't really been shown to cause the memory problems. And in fact, by preventing atherosclerosis in the brain, yeah. uh, tiny little strokes, little blockage of blood vessels can cause dementia, actually in about a third of the cases. So that's a little bit of an open question. The diabetes, uh, it can raise the blood sugar a couple of points, and so I it can push you over into diabetes from non-diabetes. Exactly, if, if but then there's the the flip side, where if you have diabetes, it raises your risk of cardiovascular uh, disease, and the statins the will lower does. it. Yeah, the yeah. diabetes does. So there's always a balancing act. It's tricky. So are there any alternatives to statins, John? Yeah, I mean, the first thing that I always do, I don't throw somebody on a statin right away. I say try to lose weight. I look at their, what, what they look like, you know. Mm -hmm. So if they need to lose weight, I tell them to lose weight. I tell them to watch their diet um, and uh, to do exercise. There are things aside from statins, if they don't tolerate statins, that can lower your cholesterol. There are drugs uh, like Zetia, for example, or mm -hmm. cholestyramine, Questran, that, that stop the absorption of cholesterol from the intestinal tract. There are other ones that work in, in different ways. So, and there, there are these new, there's a whole new brand of, uh, of medication that's on the market just being FDA approved that's going to dramatically uh, lower it, although the jury's still out on what that's going to do long term. As we wind down this hectic holiday season, here's one from JP who wrote on Twitter, discuss how overwork, tension, and stress can produce physical problems, even disability. This is something we all worry about, Holly. Absolutely. You know, so Anthony, we know stress is ubiquitous, right? And, and what's interesting to point out is not all stress is bad stress. There's something called use stress, which is where we're stressed, but around a good event, like planning a wedding is certainly stressful, but ultimately brings us happiness or the arrival of a baby. Uh, but then there's negative stress, chronic stress, whether it's around family, finances, or being exposed to traumatic events like a, a car accident or even people who are in war. When we're exposed to chronic stress, it raises something that we call allostatic load, uh, which is basically wear and tear on our body from mm. being constantly exposed to hormones the body releases when we're stressed. Those are fight or flight hormones. Um, they can be cortisol. They can be uh, adrenal hormones. And we're supposed to be exposed to them for short periods of 
of time, but not for long periods of time. Mm -hmm. So chronic stress has been linked with health problems, uh, ranging from heart disease to high blood pressure to diabetes, depression, and anxiety. It's about limiting periods of stress as much as we can. Well, I'll ask the million dollar question. I mean, how can you counter those effects or really just limit the stress in your own life? You know what, the first, it, this is right up my alley and it, I'm so interested in this because I'm an internist as well as a gastroenterologist and one of the very first things I ask is how are you doing in terms of your stress? Not just what stress is in your life but how are you reacting to it? So some people say I'm under you know, a tremendous amount of stress but you know I, I handle it well. But then I go into that some more and I used to say when was your last vacation? They say oh you know three months ago and then I realized it's when was your last restful vacation? Yes. And they go, uh, I don't quite know where that is. So the very first thing is to increase awareness. And once they sort of say, to you, you know what, I am under a lot of stress and maybe I'm not handling so well. Then you talk about things that you can do. I think meditation is great. I've been interested recently in reading about uh, transcendental meditation, mm -hmm. 20 minutes twice a day, doesn't cost any money. And people are looking at that. Um, exercise, of course. Uh, hypnotherapy, psychotherapy if you need it. I think at some point you get to the point where you say, you know what, I'm really not handling this well enough and I need professional help. But having Friday night dinner, uh, yeah. family support, all that stuff, being aware of it I think is so important. People just aren't aware of it. They come in wound up like this. Well, it's and also now become such a constant condition for so many people that you don't become aware of it because it's it's there all the time. It's it true. I, I think we also have to focus on it, though, as a medical condition and organize our lives around it. We have to actually schedule downtime, schedule family time, schedule time when we know we will not feel our stress um, in the same way that we schedule everything else, meetings and things that are stressful. I mean, no, there's no even apps now to help with like meditation. I think right. that we've, we're right. seeing it now, people, sort of the, the desire for it and the response. And there's always stress in our lives, but I think now with the terrorism threat and all that, I, th mm -hmm. I think people are feeling it more, they're reacting more, they're saying things yeah. that maybe they don't mean more. And I think this is a time for us to pull together and, and uh, I think one of the problems is people get isolated, they feel stressed and they don't reach out. Really what you need to do is embrace community and support of your loved ones. That's very good of us. All right, Dr. John LaPook, Dr. Holly Phillips, thank you both. And thanks to all of you who sent in questions.